Well, folks, I was walking down the street the other day when I saw a sign for a pizza place that said, Garlic breath is sexy. To which the only thing I could respond was, You're damn straight it is. Anyway, if you've been watching my reviews much, you've probably noticed the last few animes I went over were friendly, small-time shows that most people didn't notice. But I'm going to do one more before I come back up from under the radar. However, the difference this time is that this one isn't so friendly. I speak, of course, of the anime Hell Girl, or Jigok Shoujo, which sounds cooler because it's foreign. The premise of Hell Girl states that if someone is tormenting you and you truly desire revenge on them, then there is a website, of all things, called Hell Correspondence that if you log into at exactly midnight, you can type in the name of the person you want revenge on and the Hell Girl will appear and send them to hell for you. However, it turns out to be a bit more complicated than that, since what actually happens is that she appears to you, gives you a small straw doll with a red thread on its neck, and tells you, sure, all you gotta do is pull the thread and I'll send that person straight to hell for you. But if you do, then when you die, I'll be taking your soul to hell as well. So first of all, Satan is in the internet. Big surprise. Second, as soon as I read this description, I instantly knew that this show could go in one of two directions. Either a show full of heartlessness and despair where people get murdered and molested and nothing is happy and after watching it you want to go hide in a corner and cry and start shopping at Hot Topic like all the other emos. Or a show full of whiny teenagers with no mature view on life who completely underestimate the weight of this decision and make deals with the devil for piddling menial reasons. Unfortunately, it turns out to be the latter, and ironically, with all the talk about going to hell in this show, that's exactly where this show is going. But all in due time, first let's cover the characters. First, the most obvious character in the show is the one it's named after, the hell girl herself, I. Kind of an unfitting name, since I is also the Japanese word for love, but whatever. I plays the role of the creepy little girl who stares at you a lot and talks in this breathy, whispered voice. And the disappointing thing about her is that even though she's the entire basis for the show, she has basically no character development of any kind. In fact, she doesn't really even have a personality other than acting like she's from The Shining. She's just an icon with a job more than a character with a story. And for the centerpiece of the show, she's tiringly dry to watch. She also has her three sidekicks that help her in her soul-faring duties. Uh, this guy, uh, this chick, and this old dude. Uh, what are their names? Well, these characters are so forgettable that, well, I forgot. Seriously, even though these three are always around, they have no story or development at all and do nothing that justifies their existence in the show. They're just unnecessary extras that the show would probably be better off without, really. On the mortal side of the show, the two big characters are Hajime and his daughter Sugumi, who could be argued are really the main people of the show, but since they don't even appear until halfway through, they don't qualify in my opinion. Hajime is a reporter who has little better to do than investigate the so-called urban myth of the Hell Correspondence, and gradually gets dragged into the mess of it actually being real because Sugumi, for some mysterious reason, starts getting visions where she can see through Hell Girl's eyes. So he ends up going on a crusade of sorts to stop people from selling their souls to the Hell Girl. His wife died in a car crash a while back, which ends up being part of the story, but not till the very end of the show. So he takes care of Sugumi by himself, who is one of those sassy little kids whose behavior is a bit older than their actual age, which probably has something to do with how she and Hajime have one of those relationships that's more buddy-buddy than parent-child, since Sugumi actually calls him Hajime, not dad. And since Hajime is kind of a smartass, it makes you wonder what kind of parenting he does. Now then, back to the hatred. There are two main reasons why this show needs to be backed over with a truck in somebody's driveway. The first is that one of the cardinal sins of anime is thou shall not be predictably repetitive. And this show doesn't just break that rule, it takes it into a back alley and bludgeons it to death with a nail bat. The episodes are pretty much all standalone, and I kid you not when I say that about five solid minutes of almost every episode in the show is taken up by the same two scenes. First is the one where I appears to the person that summoned her, gives them the doll, and explains how the whole deal works. Every time it happens, it's the same damn scene, right down to the identical lines of dialogue, and it doesn't help that I talks really slow. The only difference when this happens is who is standing in front of her reading the same script and occasionally the background behind them. 
Scene two comes later in the episode when that episode's chump inevitably takes the deal and pulls the thread like they always do, and we have to sit through this very uneventful attempt at suspense and stalling where we see I get out of the pool, get dressed, and ride over to the human world. This part isn't just repeated, it's the exact same animation, music, and words copied and pasted onto almost every episode. I mean, look, Mr. Director, I know you're trying to save money here, but seriously, how lazy and blatant can you get? And then after they're done with that animation recycling bullwocky, what happens next is also incredibly predictable, as I and her lackeys will appear to the person they've been sicked on and make them start tripping out in some freaky but not that scary scene themed to what they've done. After messing with them for a bit, the trio will ask them to repent for their sins, which they never do and are always moronically arrogant about it. Then I appears to say her soul-consuming catchphrase yet again, and then we see her on the river to hell ferrying them to their eternal punishment. This show is a full season long, but watching it felt like more because this pattern is set in freaking adamantium. Now, the other reason that I could not bring myself to enjoy this show is that besides all the patsies in the show being young, mostly teenage, and by the way, mostly female, is that every single one of them is an idiot. And not once does someone in this show pull that thread for a worthwhile reason. Now, yes, I am not a teenager anymore, and I get that the teen demographic this show is aimed at in their impressionable little minds might have more empathy towards the characters, but for crying it out loud, have some perspective. It is not worth sending someone's soul to hell, much less your own on top of it, just because your dog died. And no, I didn't make that up. That really happens. And what else is that happens three separate times? Three separate times. Three separate times. 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 Yeah, you see how annoying that is? I mean, yeah, worse things than that happen in the show, but I swear, these kids are lining up to sell their soul for a box of Fruit Loops. And if you go and do your devil deal because Jimmy picked on you and stole your lunch money in seventh grade, what are you going to do when you're 30 and run into grown-up problems, huh? Okay, if I'm gonna damn someone and myself to hell, somebody better have died. It better have been horrible, and they better have been important. Not, I didn't get the part in that play, or my friend doesn't like me anymore. And while sometimes these lame reasons could be used to show sad irony in someone not understanding the weight of their decision, the thing is, all of the stories are like this. Now, yes, I've mentioned earlier that I'm not religious, but I am not without empathy or imagination. And if you've ever tried to truly wrap your head around the concept of hell, it's downright terrifying. You know, some infinite chasm of blackness and pain where beast and monster rip at your bones, tearing limb from body and flesh from marrow. A place where you're forced to dance to Richard Simmons exercise videos in slow motion while the Lamb Chop song that never ends plays in fast forward at deafening volume all while being feasted upon by a swarm of locusts. There is no hope, no rescue, no salvation, and no end. No, you can't bite through your tongue and drown in your own blood. You're already dead. You getting the idea? Because I can keep going. And besides that, let's think logic here. If the person you want revenge on is really that much of a bastard that they deserve to go to hell, don't you think they'll be going there anyway when they die? All you're really paying for is for them to get there sooner. And in that case, what do you need the evil website for? Why not just kill them yourself? They go to hell, and sure, you may get caught for it, but you've got a sob story to tell the jury, and even if you go to jail for a long time, it's quite a bit better than the pit of Hades for... ever. Now anyway, let's get off that unpleasant note and talk production. The animation saves enough dough from constant recycling to make the rest of it look decent. The music's not bad and is mostly suspense-based and tries really hard to make the going to the human world scene more interesting, though I'm afraid nothing could fix that. And since I managed to watch the DVD version of the show, I actually saw it in English. Gasp! So the American voices are... actually not too bad. Nothing great, and I think I overdoes her role just a bit, but better than a lot of U.S. voices and quite listenable. The job done on the script translation is also admittedly pretty good, though it does suffer from actually saying the line, when I'm done with you, you'll be nothing more than a Wikipedia footnote. One other thing that bothered me here, and I feel another rant coming on, 
is that even though the show's writer is apparently a female PETA member who hated high school, there is no respectable depiction of women in scary situations. All right, ladies, if there is a stalker you've never seen who's always calling your cell phone, stop answering the phone when the caller ID says it's him. Even if it says unknown number, if it's not him, then it's a telemarketer who you wouldn't want to talk to anyway. Furthermore, if you're home alone one day and there's a stranger who's trying to kick in your front door so he can do bad things, you have several options. A. Call the police. B. Hide somewhere. It's your house, after all. He doesn't know what's in it. C. Escape through a back door or window and run away entirely. D. Even though citizens in Japan aren't allowed to have guns, you can always go to the kitchen or garage and get something sharp or heavy. But what you should never do is pick option E, which is what this character did, which is to curl up on the floor in the fetal position approximately five feet from the door he's trying to break through and do nothing but cry and whimper until he finally busts your lock and gets you. Yes, that sounds stupid, but in fact, it's even stupider. Because in the show, this guy isn't buff or armed, he's just some prick yelling and kicking her door. Which means it's going to take a few minutes to get through, even. And this happens in a nice city, in broad daylight, with her neighbors watching. Okay, please, any females who are watching this video, I beg of you, post a comment on this page telling me that these are bad examples of female behavior and that most of you are smarter than this. Ugh. All right, all right. Let's be fair here. In the show's defense, it does carry a revenge is bad message to it, and once in a while it does use Hajime and Sugumi to make a good point. And as much as I didn't like this show, it isn't really that terrible. Just extremely mediocre. Personally, I thought it didn't take its own premise seriously enough to do it justice, and it definitely spends too much time sailing around on the USSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS